I've been driving Shinobi a lot recently and I was playing solo. I was thinking why I'm doing so and uh, well there are various reasons for this. Sometimes you have just zero minutes and uh, it takes so much time to find platoon mate to coordinate which tier you want to play. So it's just easier to play a couple of games solo. But mostly uh, the, there are two reasons. One is that uh, when you are playing solo and when you are playing in a platoon, it feels like these are two different game modes. Because when you are playing solo, you are thinking about yourself and the rest of the team. And when you are playing in a platoon, there are like two of you versus the red team and you have to be supporting your platoon mate first and it's just different mental model so it just feels differently and another reason is that when you are playing with uh, someone it's always a question how much of the victory is yours and how much of it was by your platoon mate when you are playing solo there is no such question it's it's very clear that the win rate that you get is completely yours and if you are playing with 70% win rate it's all yours it's you who's carrying the game so yeah that's about the reasons and there are four general rules which I was thinking about which basically dictate how you should be playing solo they're not exactly rules uh, they are more like a mindset so okay let's get to this the first one is that you should care which tanks you drive so avoid dump tanks and prefer smart tanks what does it mean there are no dump tanks in the game and there are no smart tanks in the game so by dump tanks i mean slow tanks and take for example t95 the problem with uh, t95 is that it's very slow, it's uh, really one-dimensional and it's really limited in what it could do on the battlefield. It can't relocate quickly. You are basically only good at pushing the front line and if it happens that your team runs away you just can't do anything. So that's that's what the dump tank is and uh, the smart tank is typically a fast tank with uh, good abilities to reset cap, to support the team, to relocate, to flank and to change uh, the situation on the battlefield. So if you are playing solo it would be hard to drive dump tanks and it would be much easier to influence the game in a smart tanks. Another suggestion is to avoid tanks with low DPM and prefer tanks with uh, good DPM. And the reason is that you, in order to win you have to do a lot of damage. Typically you should be aiming for doing your health pool your health pool of damage and another health pool so basically uh, you should be thinking that if you go down two enemy tanks should go down well ideally this ratio should be even bigger but uh, it's hard to obtain and uh, that 2x coefficient is uh, something more realistic. So, 
So that's uh, the first mindset when uh, you are the first rule of uh, the first part of the mindset. When you are going to play solo, try to think which tanks you are going to drive. Uh, faster tanks, tanks with more DPM are preferable. They don't have to be OP tanks, but avoid certain type of tanks. That's what I'm trying to say. The second rule is this. Avoid close combat, avoid close range engagements and prefer mid-range and long range uh, engagements. Why is that? Because at the long range and mid-range um, those engagements are more complicated, they require more skill and you could use certain things to make it harder to hit you. So that's where the skill allows you to be at the advantage. If uh, two tanks are brawling, they're just trading shots, shooting at each other, and your options are really limited. You won't be doing much more damage uh, to your opponent than the opponent is doing to you. At uh, long ranges and at mid ranges, you should be able to hide behind uh, the hills. You could use obstacles to minimize your profile. You could use bushes to uh, become hidden. You could use bushes so your opponents do not see the heat mask and they may not show where they can penetrate you. Um, you would be able to use uh, additional equipment such as um, uh, vertical stabilizers and enhanced gun layering drives to your advantage because uh, your dispersion, your aiming, your aiming time would be uh, shorter and again there are more chances that you would be doing damage. Those are all minor tactical things that you probably already know, but the power comes from combining all those minor advantages and in the end it just happens when a good player is engaging a uh, not so good player. All those minor things come together and what happens in practice is that you would be able to take a shot or two and in return you would be able to completely destroy your opponent. All these minor things combine and give you that advantage. Uh, but this happens only at mid-range and at long-range engagements. So at the start of the game try to spot your enemy but do not move way too close. Of course it's uh, it only applies to certain type of tanks. It doesn't apply to auto loaders which uh, should be closer to hit and run and it doesn't apply to howitzers because they also have to get close because the dispersion is awful. But for the most tanks, for the most normal guns, uh, this is true. You should keep the distance between you and your opponents. And you should get closer only to uh, deliver that final blow to kill the tank and when you know that you, uh, your target is isolated. Otherwise, even, it's, even if it's enticing to get closer, Try to suppress that feeling and stay further from your enemy. Try to soften your enemy first. Use all the perks that you have, all the equipment, all the skills to your advantage to soften the enemy. And that's your ticket to the victory. The third rule is to stay within a group. Don't run away from your team. 
always make sure that uh, you are close to some green tanks which uh, could support you and whom in turn you could support. Um, the problem is that when you are driving tanks, for example like Shinobi, there is a certain risk that uh, other tanks would rush you. If uh, we have a Lux on the red team, they could uh, just come close to you, unload the clip and run away. And that would be a disaster because um, it's not an effective trade of damage. That's not how you should be working on the field. Uh, if you are staying closer to, say, some heavy tanks, the chances that looks would come close to you are much lower because uh, there is a certain risk for him to do so. And that there are certain mutual benefits. You are helping heavy tank by contributing your um, shooting ability. You, your gun is good and you could uh, prevent heavy tank from being uh, cycled and in turn heavy tank works as an anchor which uh, doesn't allow other tanks to rush you and this is a very important thing um, it doesn't matter how good you are if you are going to fight alone versus several other tanks you won't be able to win it Sometimes it works, but it doesn't work consistently. In many cases you would be losing. So if you are going to win, you should be making sure that you are finding those situations where you could use the rest of your team to your advantage. There are some certain negative, negative ways to express this. Some people say that they use their team as a meat shields. Well, if you can't shoot and you contribute your health pool as the only option, then yes, you are the meat shield. But the point is that this uh, this could be used to mutual advantage, right? So. Look at what happened in this game. Our medium tanks just ran away and they died in the city. And I stayed close to my heavy tanks. I wasn't uh, hiding behind them. I was just staying close to them. So the red mediums are not rushing me. Which gives me the opportunity to stay at uh, long range and mid range and be effective at killing them. That's the distance at which uh, Shinobi works well. And the reason why I'm able to keep that distance is because there are heavy tanks around me. So that's how you use your team to your advantage. Probably that uh, heavy tank wasn't very good player. He wasn't uh, doing a lot of damage. He was just sitting uh, <laughs> uh, at the spawn but nonetheless he allowed me to uh, to do my job properly and that's the opportunity that you should be looking for again it doesn't work uh, for all tanks some tanks like uh, autoloaders and uh, howitzers they should move closer to the enemy to be effective. They work by getting closer, delivering that clip or high explosive round and running away. But uh, many normal guns operate like this. Uh, they do consistent damage and to do so you should be able to stay at long range and mid range and the only way to do so is um, stay closer to other tanks. Uh, sometimes you could do certain things. 
Uh, I had a video recently where I was driving uh, Leopard PTA and I was flunking pretty aggressively on Temple. But these are exceptions. I was... I knew what I was doing and I was in a very fast tank. I knew that I would be able to run away and there were certain benefits from that flanking because I knew that I would be able to spot the bulk of the team. But those are exceptions. Those are things that you really should be, you really should know what you are doing. And uh, your modus operandi should be staying close to the team. So that's, uh, that was the third rule. And the first rule is proper targets prioritization. Basically, uh, you always have an option to pick between several tanks which are available, which you see, and uh, which tank to kill first. So, typically, uh, I try to damage the tank which is an easier target, so if I have more chances to do damage to the tank A versus tank B, I would be shooting at the tank A because um, the more chances I have to do the damage, the more chances I have to reduce the common health pool. The, pro the problem though is that that health pool um, is not equal. Basically, uh, if you see a tank which is just on the sliver of the health and he's one shot that should be your priority because uh, even with uh, one health point enemy tank is a normally functioning tank he could shoot and this means that he could do damage to your team he could uh, run away make it a draw reset a cap or start capturing the base and do all kinds of troubles so typically if there is an option to kill a tank you definitely should be killing that tank uh, another thing to look for is if you see good players on enemy team there should be your priority because uh, these people know how to do damage, they're more effective and by reducing their health pool you limit their options and by killing them you essentially reduce the amount of damage that their team could do to your team so it's useful to know good players or at least good clans um, I know that it's not pleasant to be on the receiving end of this and some people just focus me but that's how life is I mean it's logical and the only way that you could use that you could look at this is that it's a kind of compliment if you are being targeted then they fear you and they think that you're a good player so that's the best compliment you could get in this game so what else about targets prioritization uh, you should know reload time of some tanks because uh, for example if you see KV2 which has just fired he could be preferable target because it takes an awful long time for him to reload and you would be able to kill him while he is reloading. Or for example if you if you know that a certain tank has very dangerous gun like if you see Grill 15 then it makes sense to kill him first and leave IS-7 for later because IS-7 has much weaker gun and uh, typically, uh, there is much more chance to uh, ricochet that shell. So, it helps to know tank, 
tanks characteristics and um, prefer killing most dangerous tanks first. Um, again, there are various various ideas that you should consider when you are picking the target. Uh, I won't talk about everything th here. It comes uh, with ex with experience and you could read about this on forums and just think about this. Uh, but basically uh, you shouldn't be uh, tunnel visioning on just one tank. You should be like thinking who is in front of you. Uh, does it make sense to shift a bit so you would be uh, um, at another position where you should be able to uh, damage a more important tank. You should be thinking uh, if it makes sense to expose a bit and risk being hit but in return being able to kill the dangerous tank. Um, it just comes with experience. There is no generic advice. Um, the only thing that helps here to make those decisions is to be aware uh, which clans are good, which players are good, um, no characteristics of tanks, know which guns could penetrate you, which tanks are dangerous and which are not. And uh, that knowledge uh, generally helps with uh, target prioritization. Again, there are no strict rules written on table which you could follow. It just comes from experience and general knowledge of the game. So that's what I mean under target prioritization. So. Yep, here are those four rules. They are pretty generic and there was a lot of hand waving and general advice. Um, but it's really fun to play solo and know that you could uh, statistically carry the teams by playing solo given that there are like 7 versus 7 tanks. I mean, when I just uh, started to play the game, uh, my win rate was like 53%. I went to forums because I was surprised that it was that much above 50%. And I was very surprised to find out that some people have like 60 or 70% win rates. And probably that quest to superiority has changed uh, how I decided to play the Blitz because uh, it was really amazing that some people could influence the game that much and uh, it's really amazing that you could do this just by learning all those minor details combining them learning to employ them on the battlefield and as a result uh, those things would give you that significant advantage. So again, how to play solo. Prefer smart tanks or dumb tanks. Prefer mid-range and long-range engagements over short-range engagements. Stay close to the team. Use your team to your advantage. And finally learn to prioritize targets. And basically that's that's what you should be doing to win games playing solo. So it's not that hard, it's just uh, it's just practice and learning all the all those things. Well, I hope it was useful somehow to you. Uh, see you on the battlefield and good luck.